So today we're working on a 2007 Cadillac STS. It was towed in, dead electrical system. Apparently the customer replaced the battery and something happened after changing the battery. I'm not sure if the battery went dead initially and he tried to boost it or charge it and then he changed the battery with another one and that turned out to be defective. Now we got a second battery in here. There's no electrical power in the car whatsoever. Um, it uh, will have to be towed into the shop, so it's in the shop now. We're going to do some tests and see, first of all, if we have any battery power. So all we have at the battery is 4 volts right now, and the polarity looks, nor looks correct because it's not showing negative 4 volts. I got the leads hooked positive and negative, so we'll have to put a booster on this and see what's going on. So with the battery charger hooked up, we've got an accessory active message on the dash, and I see the radio is on. And then we get a red flashing light when we press the key, so I'm going to connect the scanner to this thing and see if we can pull any codes out of it right now. So I've got the scanner connected and we're trying to do a network scan. I believe the key is in the ex or the ignition is in the accessory position, but I had no communication with the PCM, so I'm checking to see if it'll talk to any other computer, but it doesn't look like it. Oh yeah, here we go. So we got a airbag code, driver's door module code. codes but no communication it appears there's no communication with the BCM and the BCM yet the network is is up mind you that's only seven driver's door HVAC low voltage code instrument panel low voltage code And bus codes, lost communication with transmission control, APS, radio, and some network issues, radio code, and didn't, did not connect to the OBD2 side, so it doesn't appear to have scanned the PCM, I'm not sure about the body controller either, because there's a whole bunch of network codes going to go back and try and connect to the PCM. And that's what I thought, you know, communication with the PCM. Let's see if we can get into... transmission although I believe that's the same computer. Google Drive. No communication with that too. So no communication with the PCM or the transmission computer. But I have communication with the other controllers such as the instrument cluster. So I got a data list from the instrument cluster, no Prindle state because that's coming from the transmission computer. Okay, so we're gonna have to check powers and grounds to the PCM pull up the schematic for that. So here's the power distribution diagram that shows ignition voltages to the PCM 
ignition one, ignition one, battery voltage, ignition one, and so far I've checked this this uh, HV HFV6 fuse, 15 amp ECM fuse, which on here is labeled right there, 15 amp, and I see that there's a 10 amp fuse in there. But there is power to that fuse. It's only a 10 amp, so somebody might have switched it. And then there's this fuse here, ECM TCM fuse, which is 10 amp, which is down here. That's good. And then there's another fuse over here, TCM IPC fuse. That comes out of the run crank relay. So the TCM IPC fuse is the third one up, which is this one here, but it has to be in run. So we're going to turn the key on and see if we got power there. So I believe I have the ignition in the on position now. I've got some dash lights on, but I've got no power on this 15 amp fuse. I can hear a relay clicking on and off repeatedly, but not cycling on and off. Just clicked on and off a couple. There it goes again. Not sure what that is. Now that comes from this run crank relay, which is controlled by. Doesn't say where this run start signal comes from, but we find this run crank relay here. Low battery. It's in the fuse block. It's in here. There it is. Run crank right there. This one right here. So that relay should actually be on right now. I'm going to get a relay puller and put a jumper in there. So I got a relay breakout box in here now. And on one side of this I got 85 and 86. And one of these is supposed to be power right now and it's not. Terminal 30 on here is power. And of course the relay is not being energized. So we're going to have to find out what turns that relay on. It says run start. So either the ignition is not actually on, or whatever supplies this run-start circuit is not supplying power. So I installed a relay bypass in there, which essentially jumpers 30 to 87 on that relay. And now I have a check engine light that I didn't have before, and I suspect we will have communication with the scan tool. I'm going to go back here and look at this. Go to engine. Go to codes menu. Display codes. And it's still got no communication. Okay. Well, we'll have to find out where that relay gets its power from because maybe that circuit's powering up another input to the PCM. So there's like 20 power distribution diagrams for this Cadillac. I swear Cadillac must be Latin for relay because there's a ton of relays in here. But this run crank relay, the control circuit, comes from circuit 1639 here which comes from an ignition one relay and the ignition one relay is in the fuse block right rear, so probably under the seat in the back. And the ignition one relay feeds a bunch of fuses in the rear fuse block. But I see that it also feeds this CMP relay, which is this one here right beside the other one. And we, see we have no power on either of these two either. So the control circuit, a common circuit, 1639 looks like it's not reaching here so we're going to have to go find the ignition one relay now and see if it's being powered on it's funny how they don't show the control side of that relay so we'll have to find another diagram for that
but first find that relay. So it turns out the right rear fuse block is under the back seat. So remove everything off the back seat, remove the back seat cushion from the car. And there are two fuse panels. There's a right rear fuse panel and a left rear fuse panel over there. So this apparently is the right rear fuse panel. And there is the center. There are four relays in this thing. Rear defogger relay, interior lamp relay, run crank relay micro, which is this one right here. Yet on the wiring diagram, they call it an ignition one relay. I'm assuming that's the same thing. Anyways, we're going to take that relay out. I've already checked all the fuses in this fuse panel, and all the fuses that have power are good. There's a bunch of dead fuses, but I'm going to put this relay jumper in here. And reinstall the relay on it. And we've got a good ground here with a pair of ice grips clamped to a bolt in the floor. And let's see, that's terminal 30. No, 30 is over here. It doesn't want to focus. So terminal 30 has power. Of course, the relay is not on. And neither 85 nor 86 has power. 85 and 86 are not illustrated on this diagram, so we'll have to we'll find the power distribution diagram for the ignition one relay, which is right here. What supplies power and ground to that thing? So it turns out that ignition one relay supplied control power to turn it on from the actual instrument cluster. So in the instrument cluster, it gets an input from the key switch, which is really a push button switch on the dash ignition mode switch. So we're going to have another look at the instrument cluster information. See if there's codes related to the ignition switch. So we're in the instrument cluster here. Instrument panel cluster. And let's click display codes. low voltage, ignition, start, circuit, short to battery, short to battery, CAN bus codes, all kinds of CAN codes. We saw these before, I thought they were all because of low battery voltage, so we're going to clear them out and see what comes back, if anything. Give it a few seconds, click display codes. No codes present. Let's look at data. Uh, input, output, exterior, interior. So it looks like the instrument cluster is in control of interior lights and load management. Oh, the ignition switch status is in here. I don't see it on that list. Steering wheel controls, ballet switch active, interesting. Okay, let's look at outputs, maybe it'll show the status of that run crank relay or the ignition one relay, accessory LED, run crank relay status off. Well, that would explain why run relay status off. So it's seeming like it's not getting an input from the ignition switch to turn all this stuff on. Let's try load management. Somewhere it's got to have... No, not there. Where is the ignition switch status? That must be, I would assume that's brake pedal. Maybe there's a separate module for this. But you would think it would be in this 
in, let's go back in the inputs here and see if we can see the ignition switch status. This is valet switch active. Hmm. Okay, so we'll exit out. Let's try codes again one more time to see if anything came back. Nothing come back. Let's try functional test. Output controls. <laughs> Big deal. So much for that. So that was instrument panel module. Or that was instrument panel cluster. I'm not sure now. Let's try instrument panel cluster. Is that what I was in? I don't remember seeing history and current codes for instrument panel cluster. No, I was obviously not in this one. So we're going to clear this code out of here. And let's look at data in here. Ah, there's the ignition switch. Ignition 1 input inactive. Ignition cycle counter. Trundle state. Hmm. So it's obviously not seeing the ignition switch turn on. Let's see if we got any other functional tests here. Display, coolant, tack. No, that's just display tests. Don't see a separate module for the instrument panel cluster and instrument panel module. Let's go see what that thing is called again. Ignition mode switch. Well, I'll have to have a look at that. So I turned the ignition on and off a couple of times and the run relay status shows on now and the run crank relay shows on now and I'm sure now that we'll have communication with the PCM but we're going to check engine codes play codes still says no communication all right, I'll put the relays back in. Let's try the tranny computer. It's probably one and the same computer. Unless it's shut off again. I did determine it is the instrument panel module. Yeah, they're still showing it on. Okay, well we're making some progress. That run crank relay is powered up now. I don't know what I did. All I did was turn the key on and off a couple times or turn the push button switch on and off. So that fuse, which was the TCM IPC fuse, is now live. This relay is now on. But I still have no communication with the PCM. So all these fuses test okay. All right, continue on. So I thought I'd give the Autel scanner a try here. It wasn't able to auto ID obviously because no communication with the PCM. But it is pulling up basically the same computers as the other scan tool, the Snap-on scan tool did. Curious if the uh, 
data list in the instrument panel module shows the same. I cleared all the fault codes that I could read from 13 controllers with the other scan tool. You can see that it never communicated with the uh, focus. It never communicated with the ECM or the transmission controller. column lock module, it's a different one. Vehicle communication interface is OnStar and the Snap-on scanner will talk to the OnStar. Not too concerned about that, I'm not trying to fix OnStar. So, instrument panel cluster, Oh, that's not what I wanted. Let's do it. Let's go back. No, I don't. No, I don't want to exit that. Instrument panel module. Uh, live data. Inputs. Looking for ignition switch status. Basically the same as the other one. Ignition's mode switch has zero here. Don't recall seeing that. Well, maybe that was in the list. Ignition mode switch. Zero to 100 counts. This one is showing run crank, run crank relay is on and the run relay status is on. Yet if I go into this vehicle, I have a green light on the says driver's door is ajar, passenger door, hood ajar, and so on. Watch what happens if I try to start this thing. It's like I just shut everything off. I wonder what the counts are on that switch status, if it's even showing now. scanner is giving me basically the same data list. Ignition mode zero. I'm wondering if you've got a problem with this ignition control mode uh, switch. It sure seems like it. Because after it sits for a few seconds it'll come back on again. And again it's back on. Check engine light is on. But when I try to start it, foot on the brake, everything just shuts off, including the radio. If I press accessory, it says shift to park. It is in park. He was saying he had a problem with the shifter, where that message would come up, shift to park occasionally. Check engine light is on by itself. And we just sit here for a minute. And I believe that ignition dash will power back up again. Yeah, pause this recording. So about 60 seconds after I said that it, it 
turn back on, the gauges did a sweep, and we get all these messages, the check engine light is on, but I still have no communication with the PCM. Oh well, I'm going to go back to the Autel scanner and see if there's any specific input from this actual switch. I don't think it's networked, but I'm going to take a look at a wiring diagram for that. So I'm looking at the instrument panel module and I find this diagram in uh, Mitchell or through Identifix and it shows there are two fuses that feed the instrument panel module ALDL TPM or IPM ALDL fuse and volt check fuse tested both of those fuses this is the volt check fuse here and it's good and the other one is up here one two three four five and it's good on both sides so I'm starting to wonder if we have a ground problem maybe on this thing because it will work and then it'll cut out or we have a problem with the actual ignition switch so I'm going to look for these this uh, instrument panel module right side of dash behind glove box and these two grounds G201 and G101 G101 near the left front strut tower at the bottom of the inside fender well. Well, oh, that's not a nasty spot. Left front strut tower, bottom of the inside fender well. Well, we can have a look at these grounds. Maybe find this module and do some back pinning and see if we've got a problem with the grounds on it. So the instrument panel module is located behind the glove box. You must remove a bunch of Phillips screws take the glove box assembly out and the instrument panel module is actually up there so we're going to get it down and do some pinouts on the back of that module and see if we got any issues with power and ground to it so we're at this uh, instrument panel module behind the glove box checking those two power wires they come in on pins one and two of connector two so that's this one right here A glare there because it's too bright. Oh, there's pin one and it's reading 13 volts and pin two 13.3. I got a battery charger on it and then the ground wire. Sorry for the shake here. I'm do this with one hand. The ground wires are black and white wires. That's pin three. There's pin 3, it's 0.03, make sure I'm in there, that's relative to the negative post of the battery. 0 0.03, and also the ground on pin 9, which is this one right here, in the corner. <laughs> and it shows 0 0.11, so... Nothing wrong with the two power supplies and nothing wrong with the two grounds. Well, there is one more power supply up here. Pin one in connector one. It's yellow wire. That's way up here. And that's 13.2 as well. So. I'll have to figure out which one of these is the key switch. So I had difficulty finding connector views for this instrument panel module. Turns out because it's under the body control module, because it actually does the body control functions. Anyways, the uh, connector 1, pin 15 there, is the IPM ignition mode switch re reference voltage and I've got battery voltage on that one and then connector 3 pin 29 which I'm back pinning right now is ignition switch ignition mode data signal now that's stepped resistances right now at rest it looks like it's not connected to anything so it makes sense that I'd have 0.11 volts on it so I'm going to set up up from the other side to see if I can see what happens when we push the button. 
So I decided I'd check the grounds to the ECM, and the ground to the ECM is down here on the side of the engine, and it's tight. But I noticed some mouse activity or rodent activity under the wiring harness here, and that kind of bothers me. I hope that's not our problem, but I think I'm going to check powers and grounds to the PCM because I should have communication with the PCM regardless of whether or not well, that relay is on now. We have power to this fuse. So the PCM should communicate. So I've got connector 2 at the ECM disconnected. I was going to try to back pin it, but the terminals are so tiny and they're almost molded in there. So I've got a, a proper size terminal in the pink black wire, which is engine main relay fuse battery power doesn't really look pink it kind of looks tan but whatever and I've got the load pro set up here so that I can read the voltage on the wire and at rest it reads 12.3 volts which isn't bad but watch what happens when I press the button on the load pro it drops to 0.79 so there is a problem with that power feed wire 1.3 volts. If I put it on a good power supply at the feed stud here, see it's 13.76, push the load button, nothing changes. Drops by about 0.1. So we're going to investigate what's where that wire comes from. So pin 1 voltage ignition 1 voltage and pin 17 on connector 3 or sorry connector 2 of the PCM comes from that HFV6 or V8 fuse I can't read that which is actually <clears throat> this 10 amp fuse over here in the fuse panel that's supposed to be a 15 <clears throat> and if I put the load pro on the actual fuse, can I get on there? Okay, so I got it on the fuse, and I'm reading 12.5 volts, but when I press the button, it drops to 1.3. Now, according to that, that comes from the powertrain relay. Let's see if the same thing happens on the V8, or let's see if the same thing happens on the other fuse, other fuses there, coil fuses, odd coils, even coils. So which one is the odd coils and even coils? over here. These 15 fuses over here. So that middle fuse is an even coil fuse. So I got it on that one and I press the button and it drops just the same. So that that whole relay center is being affected. I wonder if that powertrain relay is defective that feeds it. Okay, I'm going to get another relay center, relay jumper out. I don't like that. So I pulled the powertrain relay out, which is that one there. And this is what we see. Green death. Well, Try putting in a jumper in here. See if we can make it any better. Let's go back to this fuse. Now it doesn't drop anymore. So with that relay jumper in there, I'm pushing the load pro button and it doesn't drop. 
So is it just the terminals that are oxidized in there? I'm going to clean that up and see what happens. So I got that powertrain relay inside a jumper, relay jumper, and I cleaned the terminals. And with the terminals cleaned on pin 86 over here, this could be 85 or 86 depending on which way you put the relay in, I've got 13.8 volts, but when I press the load pro to put a load on it, you hear the relay click off and the voltage drops to like 2 volts. Um, yet on the 30 side of the relay, you see they come from the same power source inside that power distribution center. When I load the 30 side of the relay, which is this pin here, there's no change in voltage. So the problem has to be the circuit board inside there. So we're going to put a relay jumper in here like I did before, which is this guy here. That will connect 30 to 87. Then we're going to reconnect the PCM connector. Actually, let's check for a voltage drop on this wire now. Okay, so I got the load pro on the pin one there. Press the button, no drop. So with that in there, we're going to check for, put the PCM connector back together and see if we got data. So I put in the relay jumper to connect 30 to 87 on the powertrain control relay. And that gives us stable power to that uh, HFV8 fuse. And then I had to put in a switch for the other relay, the run crank relay, to get stable power to the other fuses. Now I got power to the PCM. I can hear it turning on and off occasionally. So there's something else going on inside this fuse box. Definitely there's a problem in the fuse box. There's the PCM turning on, but I still got no communication with the PCM and I want, I, I suspect it's got to do with this fuse panel. It still won't run, obviously. So this has turned into a headache. I'm going to check on availability of a fuse panel for this thing. So I've removed the relay center, removed the positive battery cable, a couple electrical plugs here, one plug here. I'm going to take all the fuses out of this thing and open it up and have a look inside. But I need to take a picture of it beforehand. So that I have evidence of how all these fuses and relays go. And yet some more green death noticed when I took the rest of the relays out. You can see this one relay, I don't know which one it was. This, this one in this corner and this one here. We'll look at the relay center and see which one that is. low beam relay and something about a fan relay so I don't think that's related to our issue but definitely some corrosion going on in there let's have a look inside this thing so this relay center is not meant to come apart but I took it apart there's these two bolts that hold the connectors on from the top they got these pal nuts on so I tapped them through from the back side this is the inside of the circuit board. There are several layers of circuit board here all intertwined. And you can see the evidence of the green corrosion on several of the connectors there. Boy, this is not very well constructed. You can see several of the terminals on the top here are corroded as well. and green corrosion on the connector so who knows what kind of hocus pocus was doing to network wiring and such so we're going to see what the availability of this part is i don't think it has any electronics in it so we might be able to go for a used one if it's available